everyone, just about morning. <laughs> Helen Plath here from Nurture Mamas. I hope you're really well. Welcome today to the 18 weeks pregnant sequence. So for this, you don't have to be pregnant. You may have already had your baby um, a few weeks ago, a few months ago, a few years ago. Um, so really this is very gentle today. I'm going to go through a nice gentle seated flow and then we'll do a few minutes of core at the end. So around 10, 12 minutes, I think. We'll see how it goes. Um, core is a really important thing to do. It's not an aesthetic thing. It's around building the strength and maintaining the strength of your core all throughout your pregnancy, which will really help prevent back pain. And then also you're talking about a muscle called the transverse abdominis, the TA, the lower abdominal muscles, sometimes I refer to them. Um, <clears throat> and really you want, it's a huge corset of muscle that comes around the whole of the abdomen and inserts into the pubic bone. And this muscle is actually responsible as well, as, as, as um, it has a lot of functions, but it also helps to push baby out as well if you're having a vaginal delivery. So the core will work as a function together. So you've got the muscles at the front of the abdomen, your back muscles, the pelvic floor muscles, and then your diaphragm at the top, and all of those need to work together. So uh, one of the things that I really focus on a lot during pregnancy is making sure that you're still working your core, because it's very easy to forget about, <laughs> and it can lead to different elements, different parts, um, can lead to weakness in certain areas. So you may find you back pain, mild incontinence, lots of different things um, that can that can happen from a, a weak core and some part of the core. Okay, so we're gonna get started. Um, again, if you haven't done any exercise, please don't exercise if you're pregnant unless you have your medical care providers um, okay to exercise. But really you could do this during the, any stage of your pregnancy because we're gonna go pretty gently today. Okay, so all I have is a little cushion that I'm sitting on. You can have um, cushions, pillows, or uh, some yoga blocks or a yoga bolster if you have one as well. So I'm gonna start off just with a breathing exercise. We live so much of our time in our minds, in our brains, so it's really important, particularly when you're pregnant or you're a new mama, to take a little time for yourself to come inwards. So really trying to just see how you're physically feeling. And most of the time when you stop, you're actually very tired. So we're gonna bring ourselves inwards. I'm gonna do a nice breathing exercise, which is good to use um, during your labor, um, but also any type of, um, of labor or birth that you might have, whether that's a plant cesarean, whether you're hoping to have a natural active birth, Breathing is one of your biggest tools that you can use to keep yourself super calm, which will actually help have a faster birth and or in a cesarean situation, keep you calm because that can be really nerve wracking too. And also um, for any of you who are mothers, you'll know that you can be faced with very stressful times. So breathing techniques are really good to run into the bathroom for two minutes and do some nice quiet time to yourself. Okay, so it's a counting breath. So I'm gonna um, count you through it and then I'm gonna go silent for just for a minute where I want you to keep it going as well and I'll do it with you. Okay, so I'm gonna place my hands on uh, my bump um, and obviously if you're pregnant, you can do that. If you're not pregnant, you can place your hands on the abdomen or just on your knees. Okay, so just let's take a couple of nice big deep breaths in through the nose first of all and out through the mouth. So just one or two more nice big deep breaths in through the nose and out through the mouth. And with every exhale, see if you can relax the body. So the forehead, jaw, shoulders in particular. And then I'm gonna take the hands to baby and I'm gonna to start to count. Okay, so we're going to inhale through the nose for a count of four, two, three, four, exhale to count of six, two, three, four, five, six. Inhale, two, three, four, exhale, two, three, four, 
five, six. Inhale, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four, five, six. Inhale, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four, five, six. Inhale, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four, five, six. Inhale, two, three, four. Exhale. So at home, you can practice that really simple breathing exercise for even two or three minutes a day. It's really effective and really widely used during labour. So we're going to stay seated today and then lie down for a bit of core. So for the first um, exercise, we're just going to start to draw the attention into those lower um, abdominal muscles and they sit just underneath um, the bum. You want to draw them in as if you feel like you're giving baby a little hug. So we're going to take the hands, big deep breath in, exhale, press the hands away from you, draw in the tummy, sitting up nice and tall, big stretch up, and exhale all the way down. Again, inhale, exhale, drawing in the tummy, lifting up, careful not to stick the chin out, shoulders are relaxed, and exhale down. Inhale. And then a big stretch down. Take the hands behind the back. So when you come behind the back here, you're trying not to lean back. So you want to try and keep the back as fairly as upright as possible on the fingertips then behind you. You can press your chest forward and then you can look straight ahead or drop the chin head back, whatever is most comfortable for you. And focusing, excuse me, on opening through the chest muscles here. And then you can hold it like this, or if you want to lift the hips off the ground, drop the head back. And then coming all the way back to sit, slowly take the hands in front of you. Palms are facing, you're going to round the back, chin to the chest, relax the shoulders. Stretching the hands out in front, stretching the back behind. Coming back up, we're going to do some little circles here. So you're moving. It's like you're rocking on your sitting bones, rocking on your pelvis, rolling in through the lower back, all the way around, both directions here. That's it, and then coming back up, we're gonna drop the right hand down, bend the elbow, lift up the left arm. So you wanna try and keep that left bum on the ground. Relax the shoulders to get a really nice opening through the left hand side. And then use that right hand to pop you up and windmill over the other side. So notice I'm not like this, squashed here. I've dropped the shoulders, sliding the hand away to give space in both my right and left sides. So you can linger for one side. That's a little bit longer if you, if you need to. And then last one. And then coming back up. We're going to do a gentle twist. So right hand to the left knee, left hand behind you. You want to get that left hand again into the center of your back and sit up straight. And make sure your two hips are pointing forward, that you're not pulling that left hip back. So big deep breath in, sit up tall and exhale, turn. So relax the shoulders here. You might find that you kind of burp a little bit. It's good for the digestion system, this one. So relax the shoulders. Stay here for a few breaths if you can. But you don't want to feel like you're pulling on baby if you're pregnant. And then swapping sides, just swap the hands, big deep breath in, sit up tall and exhale. And 
and then coming back. And of course, you don't have to sit as I'm sitting. You can have the legs straight out. And indeed, if you have any sort of pelvic pain, you shouldn't be opening the hips. You should be keeping them hip width distance apart or more narrow, okay? So the next one is Badakonasana. If you have pelvic pain, girdle pain, SPD, you don't want to be doing this, okay? So you don't want to be externally rotating your hips and opening the pelvis even more. So we're gonna get the soles of the feet together. So some of you, your knees might be up really high. For others, you might just have really loose, naturally um, hips and you could be down on the floor. My hips are not that loose <laughs> for just by years of yoga practice, but also years of um, running. So you're going to literally just butterfly your legs, okay? So your back is quite straight and you're just opening into the hips like this. This is Badakonasana. So you can do in loads of different um, um, yoga poses, but this is just a super simple one. So it's just going to hold here for a few moments, doing little bounces. <laughs> And then coming back and we're going to come on to the hands and the knees. So take your time. So we're going to bring our legs to one side and then take away your cushion and coming up onto the hands and the knees. So for this, you want to, some mats are, or you could be just be on a blanket, are really thin. Others are quite thick. So if you want to, and if you need to give your knees a little bit of extra cushioning, just make a little fold in your mat or bring a pillow underneath. So for this, we're going to come down to the hands and the knees. And I'm going to start to do just little circles of my hips and pelvis here. Okay, so it looks a bit sexy, but it's not really, <laughs> it's not meant to be anyway. So we're going to go around both directions and really get loose into the lower back here and moving the pelvis all around. So it's as if, if you can imagine you have a pen at your tailbone and you're drawing a circle. So the bigger the circle, the better. <laughs> so all the way around, both directions. It's really nice to loosen up the lower back. You're also um, helping tone uh, the pelvic floor as well. Okay, and then I'm going to move forwards and backwards. I'm just going to move down a little bit here, so make sure you can see. Okay, so super simple. My knees are around hip width distance. Go wider if you want to. And I'm going to just start to rock. Inhale forward. You can do this during contractions as well. Exhale back. Okay, so if you feel when you need a little bit more space, just widen the knees. So we're going to inhale forward and exhale back. Super simple. Each time you come forward, you might want to drop your hips a little closer towards the floor. So I'm going to move my hands forward and go a little bit closer. Exhale back to a child's pose. This sequence would be really nice to do before bed or at any time of the day when you have a few minutes. And again, during contractions, if you are pregnant, you, the idea is that you want to try and keep movement going in your hips with your breath. Okay, so just one more here. And then you're going to come back up to the hands and the knees. If the wrists are sore, any kind of carpal tunnel, just come onto the knuckles. I will just do a couple of cat cows to finish being on the hands and knees. So breath in through the nose. Exhale, start to draw baby in towards you, round the top of the back, chin down to the chest. Inhale, dip the belly down, the bum up, shoulders back, breath in. Exhale, lift up the pelvic floor, draw baby in. Inhale. Last one. And then we're gonna come back. And I'm gonna come back down onto the, the back now. Okay, so just take any fold in your mat that you may have had. So for some people, it's not comfortable to lie flat on the back. Um, so for about 20% of people, they get extremely lightheaded even after about 30 seconds to a minute on your back. So I'm gonna give you two options for this. <coughs> Excuse me, we're doing some core now. If you have your pillow, you can, of course, lie flat. 
it's not really recommended to lie flat after well kind of once you get into your 30 weeks beyond and um, because of that but it's it's a little bit controversial from when people really find out that they're pregnant they go oh i have to lie flat on or i have to lie on my left hand side you don't have to as soon as you find out you're pregnant so it's really how you feel comfortable the guidelines are really once you get to kind of over 30 33 weeks lying on your left hand side okay so if you lie on your back and you feel oh lightheaded nauseous get a dig from baby immediately come up so i'm going to give you both options okay so i'm coming down this is one option on your forearms but make sure when you're doing these it's very easy to kind of just collapse down so when you're on your forearms for your core you want to be quite active so you're pressing your chest forward shoulder blades together and you're drawing in through your tummy or you can lie all the way on the floor with a cushion under your head maybe you might want to put a cushion under your hips as well okay so most people will probably be up like this the first core exercise I'm going to do is quite easy. Um, you can try this and if you feel it's too easy, we'll go straight on progressively. So I'm going to draw in my tummy muscles and drawing in those core tummy muscles. I'm bringing my knee directly on top of my hip, not closer, directly on top of my hip. Really strong core muscles. And then I'm going to toe tap one leg at a time, just bringing my knee on top of my hip, no closer. Okay, so my toes are going all the way to the floor here. I'm not holding my breath. And for some people, this can actually be quite a challenge. So if that's you, well, that's fine. You are where you are right now, and you can build on your core strength. Make sure that your lower back isn't arching up and your tummy's not gonna sticking up. So draw on the tummy, that's your toe tap first option. More progressively difficult, two feet down, knees on top of the hips. Okay, so you take a break when you need to. You should start to feel the core working. We'll just do a few more. Okay, so you can take a little rest by just dropping the feet to the floor or bringing the knees in. The next thing we're gonna do is a bicycle. So for the bicycle, you're gonna straighten your legs one at a time. So before you go anywhere, you're drawing in those core tummy muscles. You're not slouched back and you're starting to straighten one leg at a time. If you're lying flat on your back, by the way, doing these, and you start to do your bicycle or any of the, the exercises, and you notice that your lower back is up off the floor and you can slip your hands in, stop, come back, pop, push your lower back into the floor, draw in the tummy, and then do your exercises. Okay, so this you could do after you have a baby, it will be really good. So drawing in nice and strongly there. So the closer you go to the ground, the more challenging this one is. So watch that your bump isn't doming up, your belly isn't doming up. So you might be up here one at a time, or lower down. Okay, so it's really nice to work into the core. Well, nice might be too strong a word, but it's important <laughs> to work into the core. So you can just do those a couple of times and then come back up. So come to the side and pop yourself back up. Okay, so I'm gonna leave it there for today. I hope you really enjoyed it. Namaste. Please join me next week for um, Please God 19 week session. Please do share this and like, um, give us a like and I'd really appreciate it. So take care of yourself, have a wonderful day.